Have you ever seen those movies? A person falls into a South American river, and within seconds, the water boils with activity. A cloud of red spreads, and all that's left are bones. The culprits? Piranhas. These fish have a terrifying reputation, painted as the flesh-eating monsters of the Amazon. But is any of it true? Do piranhas really eat people? Today, we're diving deep into the murky waters of the Amazon to separate fact from Hollywood fiction. The answer might just surprise you. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a piranha? The name piranha comes from the Tupi language, meaning toothfish, which is a pretty accurate description. They belong to the Sarasalmidae family, which also includes their more peaceful, fruit-eating relatives, the Pacus. There are dozens of piranha species, but the one that gets all the bad press is the red-bellied piranha. These are the guys you see in documentaries, swarming in large groups, with razor-sharp, interlocking teeth designed for shearing and puncturing. A single piranha bite is incredibly powerful. Their jaw muscles are so well-developed that they can exert a bite force over 30 times their own body weight. That's pound for pound, stronger than a great white shark. So, the tools are there. The potential for damage is real. But does that mean they see humans as their next meal? The myth of the man-eating piranha can be traced back to one specific person, former U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt. In 1913, he went on an expedition to the Amazon. The local fisherman, wanting to put on a good show for the famous visitor, did something a little theatrical. They cornered off a section of the river and packed it with hundreds of starving piranhas. Then, they pushed a cow into the water. The result was exactly what you'd expect, a frantic, bloody spectacle. Roosevelt, horrified and impressed, wrote about the incident in his book Through the Brazilian Wilderness, describing piranhas as the most ferocious fish in the world. His dramatic account spread like wildfire, and the legend of the man-eating piranha was born. A single, staged event cemented their reputation for over a century. So, if that was a setup, what happens in a normal situation? The truth is, millions of people live and work along the Amazon River. They swim, bathe, and fish in these waters every single day without being attacked. To piranhas, a living, healthy human is not food. We are big, loud, and intimidating. They see us as a predator, not prey. For them, a full-on attack on a large animal is a massive risk. Piranhas themselves are a food source for many other animals, like caimans, river dolphins, and large birds. They'd much rather avoid a fight they can't win. So, where do the stories of bites come from? Because they do happen. But they are almost never the feeding frenzy scenarios from the movies. Most piranha bites on humans are single nips, usually to the hands or feet. These often occur during the dry season when food is scarce and piranhas are trapped in smaller, crowded pools. They become more stressed, more territorial, and more aggressive. Imagine you're swimming and accidentally kick a fish that's already on edge. It might lash out with a defensive bite. Another common scenario is when fishermen are handling piranhas caught in their nets. The fish, fighting for its life, will understandably bite whatever it can. These are painful, for sure, but they are warning nips, not attempts to eat someone alive. They're saying, back off, not dinner time. There's also the element of what piranhas actually eat. The vast majority of piranha species are not even strict carnivores. Many are omnivores, eating seeds and fruits that fall into the river in addition to fish. The carnivorous ones, like the red-bellied piranha, are primarily scavengers and opportunistic predators. Their main diet consists of other fish, which they often hunt by nipping at their fins and scales. They are the cleanup crew of the Amazon. They play a vital role in the ecosystem by consuming dead or dying animals, which helps keep the river clean and prevent the spread of disease. They are nature's recyclers. They look for easy meals, sick, injured, or already dead creatures. A flailing, healthy human just doesn't fit that profile. So, are there any confirmed cases of piranhas actually consuming a human? The answer is yes, but the context is everything. 
In the extremely rare cases where human remains have been found with piranha bites, the victims had already died from other causes, such as drowning. The piranhas were simply doing their job as scavengers, cleaning up a body that was already in the water. There are no verifiable records of a school of piranhas killing a healthy adult human. It just doesn't happen. The idea of them stripping a person to the bone in minutes is pure myth. Even with a large carcass like a cow, it would take a huge number of piranhas many hours, not minutes, to consume it. Think about it this way, the Amazon River is a complex and dangerous place. There are electric eels, anacondas, and caimans. Statistically, you are far more likely to be harmed by a stingray or get an infection from a cut than you are to be seriously injured by a piranha. The real danger isn't the piranha itself, but the legend we've built around it. Local guides will often demonstrate the piranha's true nature. They'll splash around in piranha-filled waters without a problem. Then, they'll put a piece of meat on a line, and the water will erupt as the piranhas go for the easy, bloody meal. It proves the point perfectly, they are drawn to the scent of blood and the promise of an easy meal, not to living, swimming people. So, the next time you see a movie where piranhas are the villains, you can smile and know the real story. They are not mindless killers. They are a fascinating, misunderstood, and essential part of one of the most incredible ecosystems on Earth. They are the river's janitors, not its monsters. Their fearsome reputation comes from a century-old publicity stunt and Hollywood's love of a good monster movie. The reality is far less terrifying and much more interesting. Piranhas are a perfect example of how a little bit of myth can completely overshadow a whole lot of scientific truth. Thank you so much for joining me on this dive into the world of piranhas. I hope this cleared up some misconceptions. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more deep dives into the mysteries of the natural world. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next adventure. Stay curious, and we'll see you in the next video.